Okay, Recon's video on Friday the 9th of August 2024. It's just gone 11.53 p.m. Chicago time. Do hope you are doing well. So it's the weekend and time for another weekend futures market recap. We'll go through 15 of the largest futures markets and I'll show you what I'm seeing on my charts. Recording this video a little bit early this weekend. That's because we are traveling. Uh, traveling down south from Noosa. We're currently in Byron Bay, lovely place. We're traveling south on Sunday to Sydney and then on Monday flying out of Sydney back to Europe. So looking forward to that. But you don't want to hear about my travel plans. You want to see some charts and discuss what's going on in the market. So let's get to that. First of all, yeah, I think directionally, I had the right idea in last weekend's video. I said we're probably going to see a little bit of weakness on Monday because the amateurs are going to look at their charts over the weekend, get a little spooked, sell out. Monday was going to be weak and then we'd recover midweek and see where we go by the end of the week. I think that was the general story that I thought would play out. However, <laughs> what actually played out totally took me by surprise. I had no idea this was going to turn into a a route and a recovery of the magnitude that we had. Directionally, yes, it's like we had weakness and we recovered from that, but the magnitude of it was, was pretty extreme. And all because we had a yen carry trade unwind, tied in with a cryptocurrency market being decimated. And I think probably the Warren Buffett story about selling out of a good part of his Apple uh, played into this, plus the weakness in the employment numbers and everybody saying we're going into recession, depression, the end is nigh stuff. But uh, all the damage was done on Sunday night into Monday morning. It's like the open. That was probably one of the best buying opportunities in a whole bunch of markets for a long, long time. So uh, we're going to talk about that. But I think for me, you know, what do you learn from these things? I didn't particularly trade this week well. I mean, I'm up for the week, but not by enough. The most important thing to learn from a week like that is don't listen to anybody. Don't listen to me. I don't have a clue. <laughs> Don't listen to the bobbleheads on TV. My God, did you hear them on the Monday and the Tuesday? It's like, that's it. It's over. It's the end of humanity. Sell everything. It's not just going to be a great depression. It's going to be the greatest depression. It was just insane. You have to follow your signals on your charts, have stops in place. Uh, if the heat gets too much, just stay out of the kitchen. Just take a couple of days off. But yeah, do not listen to the mainstream media. I like following a couple of things. I like following US politics. I like following what the hell Harry and Meghan are up to as entertainment. But I rarely listen to market commentators. I never have any of the channels on. They're not helpful. So yeah, lesson learned. But it's I don't think it's all over on the downside either. So I think we're going to have a, another little bit of a push to the downside next week. So this isn't all about we had a V reversal and we're going to break to new highs, I don't think. But anyway, we'll go through the charts. First of all, just w what actually happened this week. And I'm going to put on my handy dandy little crash correction indicator here. Crashes and corrections, typically 10% and 20% down are the two metrics that you use for a crash and a correction. So what we had this week on the equities market was a 10% uh, correction. We've recovered from there. Weekly bar, day and night session here. So uh, on the Sunday night, uh, this is where the damage was being done. We sold off and we pogo sticked off that 10% uh, correction number there. The other markets also were similarly down. So the other one was the unwind of the carry trade in the Japanese yen. This one I've just flip this upside down using the USD versus the Japanese yen so we can see the sell-off that we had in US dollar versus Japanese yen. So that's the carry trade where people borrowed yen to invest in high beta markets around the world. And they do that because it's cheap to borrow in Japan and the Japanese yen has been going down. But as soon as those markets they've invested in and leverage up in start to weaken, they get margin calls on their position, they have to repatriate those funds. So they end up selling out of positions, which further weakens the asset markets that they're in. And then they have to buy the Japanese yen in order to repatriate those funds in order to pay off the margin calls. So that's why we have strengthened Japanese yen when we have uh, asset markets going down. And this is the US dollar versus Japanese yen chart. This is the reverse. So we had the uh, US dollar weakening uh, and the Japanese yen strengthening. Also this week, we had strength in the euro, you'll notice at the beginning of the week, because the euro has also become one of these international funding currencies, just like the Japanese yen. So there we go. The correction that we've had in the Japanese yen, the bounce in the Japanese yen has been, again, just a typical correction. It's not a crash from those levels. So it's a 10% move. I suppose 10% in the forex currency is a big deal, uh, but that's what we've had and it's recovered 
by the end of the week. The more serious moves were in the cryptocurrencies, and this is uh, Bitcoin. I haven't looked at any of the altcoins, but Ethereum and Bitcoin were pretty badly hit. Here you can see, I mean, if you look at this chart, <laughs> this is the typical volatility we've had in Bitcoin over the years. Like you have a correction every other week uh, and a crash every month uh, in Bitcoin here. So from these highs, peak of 21, up at 66, and we had two little corrections and then a crash and then it was like you know, Armageddon down here. We'd really had the crash in cryptocurrencies some weeks ago and then moved down from the high down to about 49 on Bitcoin was about down 33% odd and it's recovered back up to 60. So if you were lucky enough to buy Bitcoin at 50, uh, you're up 25% on your uh, trade this week in a matter of four days. So if you made that trade, good for you. There's a lot of people there that are sitting and waiting, ready for that. And you can see, again, pogo stick up from those lows to those highs. So there we go. That's what we're talking about in terms of magnitude of the moves, just to put everything in context. But is it all over on the downside? Well, let's have a look at some of our charts. So daily chart of the E-mini. And here we go. We've got uh, big pro bars happening here. That sequence of professional bars is not over yet. We'll trail the stop up as soon as that is done. So expecting to see that sometime this week, Monday, Tuesday. The levels that we reached down here, the sell-off here, pretty extreme, but did not mirror the exhaustion buy pattern that we had here. So yeah, it was pretty decent levels on the way down, but it was an extreme level to give us an exhaustion sell there. But at some point we will trail that stop up. And here what we've done uh, on the equities markets, and you can see this in all of the major indices, we've broken the support on the lowest time frame here, was a pullback in an uptrend level. We broke down and we're going to be caught when the next highest time frame support comes in. So these two lines are going to come together and then that'll be timing wise when that happens. And you'll see on all of these markets, we're a little bit early for that. Uh, I mean, it's possible that this week we're just going to see a V reversal and we're just going to go straight back up uh, to new highs. But I think we're going to test once more get that timing right where these cyclical levels come together and then bounce from there. And as we go down the charts, you'll be able to see why I think that might happen. So that's the daily chart, 135 minute chart here, whole bunch of background in blue. That means it's super high average trade size because the next highest time frame is professional bars. Uh, exhaustion by bearish divergence, we sell off and I've said the momentum reads have been super strong. But even through that weakness, what we're seeing is a whole bunch of buying going on because all these momentum levels were above uh, zero. But push came to shove, they couldn't stop this correction, which was in the overnight session but they did hold it down here at uh, 5200 and we've bounced from there. So that exhaustion buy is getting the move going uh, at that point. That's how I read that. And you can see here on this time frame, pullback trend of trend has come in on the lowest time frame, the 135 minute chart, and it's got to sync up uh, with this move here. So these two lines have got to come together. We then probably got to see some weakness on the intermediate time frame and test back in. So I think this week is going to be a question of testing those lows and then bouncing from there. So I don't think it's all quite over on the downside. A 45 minute chart. Here's all the blue professional bars selling it down at that point a couple of weeks ago. And now they're buying it up uh, down here at these lows. But we're coming into uh, amateur bars, amateur up bars under the lip here. And yet we got a little bit of sign of strength, but we've got to have cyclical resistance coming on the intermediate time frame here on the 45 minute chart. That's going to come in. That's going to cause us a little bit of trouble. So this is possibly an area where we might, we've just floated up to this high and we could maybe just see a little bit of weakness from there. And on the 15 minute chart at the end of the week, so this is the beginning of the week and the end of the week, and you see here, so all, all the damage was done on the Sunday night into the uh, open on Monday. And the open on Monday was the best buying opportunity the entire week, despite everybody's hair being on fire on the Monday morning with that sell off. So the end of the week, yep, uh, Rambo patterns into those highs. So it's showing weakness and potentially we're gonna correct down just to test once more and see another blue professional bar would be nice on the 15. Uh, minute chart here. That's exhaustion by getting the move going. It's a bit weak at the moment. We've got to go see a little bit of a test I would suggest and then we're going to come back up. So uh, let's see how that's going to play itself out on the Monday, Tuesday. And lastly, tip bar charts. So here we go. This is the week's activity. So there we go. That's the Sunday night into the open. You can see it's made up of two moves here. We just zoom in here. You can see the picture more accurately. Here we go. This is super high average trade size selling the open on Sunday. Close on Friday, <coughs> open on Sunday night, bang, into this exhaustion sell. And then we come into these lows. Bullish divergence comes in and they're anxious to buy it up here at these, this point. That same level then becomes an area when we have a spike down, 
more blue professional bars come in here, right at the, the lows there. Bang, we spike up from there. What we're doing at the moment on Friday's trade into this high, Rambo pattern blue professional bars, potentially on better sine wave here. We've just run out of puff. And this is a pullback to end of trend. We're just sitting around this level. The bars are still red, which means we're in an uptrend, which is good. I just think with this weakness at this point here, not a lot of buying going on. I could easily see us just sink down, come back into some area of support. Blue professional bars come in, and that'll be the, the perfect place to rally from. But I don't quite see this as showing us that there's a super amount of professional support at the moment to kind of keep that rally going. They'd rather push it down uh, and jump in and pick up more volume. We'll see. That's my view on the e-mini and what's happening this week. Just on the higher time frame charts here, the daily charts, near enough daily charts, just remember we've had, a, we talked about this last weekend or the weekend before, just this large amount of blue professional bars that have come in particularly on these Forex charts here. So this is the move, the ramp that we had uh, on Monday in the euro, and that was because it's a carry trade currency, and so there were people having to repatriate funds into the euro, and that's what drove the euro up this week. Kind of closing a week at the end of the week, but we're still in an uptrend. We've still got the backgrounds in red, and we've trailed the stop up here, but that's, that's super volatile at the moment. Same thing happening with the Japanese yen, where we had that spike at the beginning of the week, that's the uh, reversal of the yen carry trade at that point there. They're forced to buy the yen to repatriate funds. And we're going to have some weakness from there. And yes, yeah, some other interesting markets. So the 10 years, 10 years spiked as well. This is a uh, flight to safety trade Monday. Just buying that ended up with exhaustion buy on these high time frame charts. That's important and sold off pretty hard. So we could easily break into a downtrend on the uh, 10 year there based on that activity. And you've got the reverse happening in equities. Yeah, so here, it's equities being picked up at the lows. So we need to test into these lows, but it looks like a bounce that we're going to generate from there. And a couple of other things. So the other one, a couple of other charts that look interesting. Uh, crude, again, same thing. Blue professional bars come in here at the lows at 72. That's an important level uh, that they were able to reach before. 68, 72s, bounced at 72, previous area where the professionals have come in. And let's see if we crack on through 78. And gold, yeah, gold was also a bit of a standout uh, this week. So sold down, blue professional bars coming at the lows, kind of holding that lows. Remember on this gold chart, on the highs up here, we have not seen exhaustion buy. Exhaustion sell, taking profits at that point. Exhaustion sell again, and flush patterns, bullish divergence, holding us in this range, 2400 to 25 and a bit. So let's see if we break back up through here, and then that'll generate the exhaustion buy patterns that uh, would signal the end of the, the rally in gold, but not there quite yet. So there we go, some higher level charts. Let us look just really quickly at the tick bar charts. So we'll go through those on the euro. So here we go, this is the Monday's Sunday night, Monday morning rally uh, into the euro. It's the unwind of the carry trade in the euro. Now we've, uh, we've got blue professional bars, super high average trade size here at the end of the week. It's in an uptrend supposedly at this point here. So let's see if that level holds. We break out of this congestion zone here above uh, nine and a half. British pound, not a whole bunch of blue professional bars down here. As the markets were selling off, the British pound got caught as did the Aussie Rambo patterns here, a little bit of a bounce, but not a whole bunch of blue professional bars at the lows. Exhaustion buy there, so it's not convincing that the uh, low is in on the British pound. Uh, Aussie dollar, which is where I am positioned at the moment. Not sure I'm long Aussie at the moment, but not sure about that. Sell off super hard down to 63. It's going to hurt. Uh, traveling to Europe and the US this year if uh, the Aussie is going to be this uh, week. So open on Sunday into Mondays, bang, 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 just follow the equities market down. But this was a little bounce here. Blue professional bars coming on the low here. And uh, yep, possibly taking profits at those highs. Let's see if that level holds or if we just break through there. I know we've had exhaustion by bearish divergence, flush, flush. I mean, it does look like it's rolling over. So got to be wary of that position on the Aussie. Japanese yen. Here we go. There's the spike in the Japanese yen. We sold off from there. Blue professional bars on the upside here, so it's not over. We're in a downtrend on the Japanese yen. Ten years, so here we go. There's the spike. Well, there's so much activity on the ten years. We have to go back at uh, the beginning of the week. There we go. The spike in the ten years, and then it sold off from there. So ten years was selling off in the equity market, was rallying. 
Uh, but let's see, broken into an uptrend at this point, exhaustion sell. Let's see if this level holds and we break back up through those highs. Gold, so here we go. Gold's interesting, so here we go. This is the sell-off here. Super high average trade size comes in on the Monday, Tuesday, down here at the lows. And exhaustion buy getting the move going. Tests with a nice little Rambo pattern here into that pattern, a couple of signs of weakness, but it's amateur down bars testing into those lows, and we've rallied from there. And no blue professional bars yet in this piece. So we get above here, could easily go test those highs. Remember, that's super important on that highest time frame that they've come in at those lows at almost 2400. Silver, silver didn't look like it was following along necessarily, yet we had the sell off, but no super high average trade size coming. Blue professional bars at the lows there. Exhaustion buy getting the move going. Let's see if it gets back up through 28. Yeah, maybe they were buying this little consolidation zone and getting ready for the next move up. So here's Bitcoin. This is all over the weekend where it weakened and then super high average trade size come in here. We rallied from the 49.50 level back up to 62.63 almost. And super high average trade size coming in here. And we're under the lip at this point with some weakness. So we could continue to see some weakness in Bitcoin. They've made good money on this trade from here to here, like I was saying, 25% odd. Uh, and let's see if they push it back down into this area uh, where they can pick up some more, take profits here, pick up some more. Crude, crude, yeah, so the crude, the bouncing crude has just bouncing off Rambo patterns at the beginning of the week. And all the blue professional bars are coming at the end of the week. So it's not a classic in terms of professionals buying the low and then the market advancing. So that doesn't look right to me for a, a real rally in crude yet. Uh, natural gas, same thing. Rambo patterns down here. And we've maxed out exhaustion by bearish divergence testing with Rambo. Blue professional bars come in. So if we break down through this level at 213 or 210, there'll be another downtrend in uh, natural gas. Copper. Copper a little bit better. Exhaustion sell down here. Exhaustion sell again, blue professional bar step in, and then super high average trade size come in on copper. So let's see if this area, just under $4, holds. We get back up through 405 And X. So corn, weak again this week. Not much activity going on in these markets. You can see how compressed that is. That's a week's activity. This is a week's activity. The Rambo pans into blue professional bars, weaken from there, bang. It's coming to exhaustion sell low. I uh, don't think the activity is going to be in the, the AGs, though, uh, for the time being, at least everybody's looking at other markets. Same pattern, exhaustion buy, bearish divergence, Rambo patterns into those highs, and we weakened from there. And lastly, wheat. So that's interesting, exhaustion buy, getting the move going, buying the dip as well. So maybe wheat is actually an uptrend at this point because we haven't seen blue professional bars taking profits at these highs. So let's see if that area holds and we break up through 550, something like that. So there we go. Just some thoughts on the charts this week. Probably a long video, but maybe was warranted after a fairly exceptional week. Hope your trading is going well and looking forward to next week's trade.